Hello booktube, it's Andrea and I'm here today with a book haul. This is my October and November book haul, even though we're early in the month of, uh, of November. I've combined the books I've got so far because I can't see me buying very many books now between uh, from now until the end of the year because obviously Christmas is coming so a lot of my salary is currently going on presents for my family as well as baby stuff for the impending arrival in February. <laughs> So I'm calming down on all my buying, so all my book hauling and my colouring book hauling and all sorts of stuff. There are a few things I probably will buy the odd book, but this is going to be the last book haul until after Christmas. Um, I usually get given books for Christmas from my partner and my parents and my brother, so I'm going to leave it and do a big haul after Christmas. Yay! Hopefully. So, let's get on to the books I bought in October and the first part of November. So the first book I bought was The Dark Tower by Stephen King. As you know, I have been reading The Dark Tower series along with Missy over at The Binge Reader. Um, I've actually read this because I read this in October because it was October's book. So look out for this on my wrap up, which is coming very, very shortly. I also bought, <laughs> there's quite a few Stephen, there's a few Stephen Kings this month. Um, I got Firestarter because this is November's read, so I will be reading this shortly. I've got some books from publishers I need to read first and review, so we'll see those in a little while. So I got The Fire Starter because that is November's book with the at Stephen Kingathon with Missy. I'm not gonna tell you what these books are about because I know you know, especially the Stephen King ones. Now the next one again, this is the last Stephen King, so that's three this month, uh, this haul, um, and this is Christine. So this is December's book for the Stephen King-a-thon. Um, so obviously this is about the car. Love this. I have not read this book for years. I loved it. I loved the film. So I cannot wait to get stuck into this one. I don't know if Missy is continuing the Stephen King reading thing next year. Um, if she doesn't, I will pick 12 Stephen King books myself and uh, read them one a month, if I can. <laughs> as I've done this year um, so that's that and now my battery's flashing and I've only just started so I'm going to change the battery and I'll be right back sorry about that I'm back I've changed the battery as I use a DSLR to film I've got plenty of batteries because I do do a lot of photography so I've always got a spare when charged up so that was Stephen King's Christine now the first book I got from a publisher this month um, um, is called District 8. It's by Adam Labour and um, this is by Head of Zeus Publishing or published by Head of Zeus. Nice country uh, cover. I will read what this one says though because this is a new book. It's only just been released. It came out in November. Life's tough for a gypsy cop in Budapest. The cops don't trust you because you're a gypsy. Your fellow gypsies, even your own family, shun you because you're a cop. The dead, however, don't care. So when Balthazar Kovacs, a detective in the city's murder squad, gets a mysterious message on his phone from a blocked number, he gulps down the rest of his morning coffee, grabs his police ID and goes to work. The message has two parts, a photograph and an address. The photograph shows a man in his early 30s lying on his back with his eyes half open, half covered by a blue plastic sheet. The address is 26 Republic Square, the former Communist Party headquarters, and once the most feared building in the country. But when Kovacs arrives at Republic Square, the body has gone. Kovacs' investigation will take him deep into Budapest shadows and an underworld visitors never get to see. The gritty back alleys of District 8, the people smuggling networks around Kaleti Station, the endemic corruption of a country still haunted by the ghosts of history. And when the lead points to the involvement of his brother Gaspar, the city's most powerful pimp, Kovacs will be forced to choose between the law and family loyalty. Now that is a bit of a trope that you see in books these days, is somebody having to choose between their family and their job. Um, and it always, you always have a, a cop who's got a brother or a sister who's really bad, or the, the, the cop's female and the brother's really bad. Uh, that seems to happen a lot again, but this one sounds really good. So I am looking forward to, doing, uh, to reading this one fairly shortly and reviewing it on my blog, book, books, books, books blog. It's been very quiet over there lately because I've been very, very ill with um, being pregnant and everything. I'm starting to feel better now, so do start keep checking because there will be a lot more reviews over there fairly shortly. Now I'm starting to feel a lot better. 
The second book I got again was from Hedda Seuss Publishing um, for review and that one is called In the Dark by Andreas Fluger. I'm currently reading this. The review is due on the 11th which is Saturday. Um, I'm not that far through it but I will be plowing on with that tonight because it is very very interesting and good. I'm not, I'll tell you more about it at the end of the month. She lost her sight but she can still see the truth. Jenny Aaron was once part of an elite police unit tracking Germany's most dangerous criminals. She was the best. Until it all went wrong, a disastrous mission saw her abandon a wounded colleague and then lose her sight forever. Now, five years later, she has learnt to navigate a darkened world, but she's still haunted by her betrayal. Why did she run? Then she receives a call from the unit. They need her back. A prison psychologist has been brutally murdered and the killer will only speak to one person. So yes, it's very, very dark. And that's not, not a pun. It really is very, very, very... Oh, yeah, it's, it's harsh. But I'm enjoying it. I just haven't had a chance to sit down and really plough through it. I've been sort of reading it on breaks at work and reading it um, in the bath and in bed and I'm going to sit down tonight and get through a good chunk of this because I really, really want to find out what's going to happen and who the killer is and what really happened to this uh, prison psychologist. So that is In the Dark by Andreas Fluger. Again, it's a brand new book. It only came out this month. <clears throat> this will be reviewed on my blog fairly shortly. Now, more books. Yes, there are still a few more. The next book I've got is one that came out a little while ago. People have said they love it. Some people have said they, they didn't. Um, <clears throat> and that is Lee Bardugo's book, Wonder Woman, Warbringer. I love Wonder Woman. I used to collect the comics. I have a huge, quite a fair, fairly sized collection of comics. I don't anymore. I do have some of the comic books that came out recently um, as tie-ins to the film. I do have some other uh, Wonder Woman stuff on my entertainment shelf, which when I do finally get around to doing my bookshelf tour of the entertainment shelf, you will see. I'm on annual leave soon, so uh, I think it's a, not next week, week after. It's a week in November, week commencing the 20th. I'm on annual leave. I will try and fill my entertainment bookshelf there. Obviously, not all the books are on there because some of them are in the room. Uh, the ones I haven't read are in the other room, so uh, they're on my TBR shelf but I can show you everything I've read or have had for years. There's quite a lot. Well, there's one, two, three, four, five, six shelves and a few odd ones. So I will do the entertainment bookshelf tour. So this is anything that's not Marilyn related unless she's featured in it because it's a book about lots of different things. So film, TV, uh, music and, and theatre. Not so much theatre because they tend to have their own, own shelf. That's mostly plays anyway but yeah the theatre books tend to have their own shelves. So it's books, films and music so look out for that you'll see some Wonder Woman stuff then I can tell you. Um, after the recent television adaptation of The Cuckoo's Calling by uh, Robert Galbraith aka J.K. Rowling which I really really loved I thought I'll buy the book. Um, I've they've, they've um, filmed three of them and shown two uh, so they've shown Cuckoo's Calling and Silkworm but they've still got to do the other one and um, they're titled Strike and then the title of the book afterwards rather than just The Cuckoo's Calling so you know it's a series. Whether or not that means that the television company that made them which is the BBC or it's on the BBC are going to continue the series um, even if JK Rowling and Robert Galbraith don't doesn't write anymore. I know their fourth one is out next year. Um, it sounds to me that they might want to, to, to continue it. Uh, it starred uh, Tom Burke and <coughs> Holiday Granger. And there's Tom Burke and Holiday Granger on the cover. I thought they would do really well. I really enjoyed the series, but I thought, I want to read the book. Is the book better than the TV adaptation? Let's have a look. I think I find with TV, I prefer TV adaptations to films because you can do it over a number of episodes rather than in an hour and a half to two hours. So for instance, uh, the Cuckoo's Calling was four episodes long, I think. Four 45 minutes to 50 minutes episodes. Um, and Silkworm was two episodes. The, the, the Cuckoo's Calling was definitely superior, but I really enjoyed the story. So I thought I'd buy it. And it is the TV tie-in cover, which is okay. I don't mind. Because Tom Burke, and whew, he's nice. <laughs> but so, yeah, I thought I'd buy the book and have a read, so... 
The next two books are second hand books. They only bought two second hand books this month. I bought them from the Doctor's Surgery Charity bookshelf um, and nearly passed out in the honour because I was feeling really dizzy and I bent down to have a look at the books on the bottom shelf and it was like the room was banned, but never mind. And they are, I got MJ Alridge, Liar Liar. Um, a D.I. Helen Grace th thriller, Chills to the Bone. So I thought I'd pick that one up because I do have another one. I have Eeny Meeny. And I haven't read it. It's on my TBR, so I thought I'd put it with them and I can just read them. Um, so this one says, In the dead of night, three raging fires light up the city skies. It's more than a tragic coincidence for D.I. Helen Grace. The flame announced the arrival of an evil she has never, account uh, never encountered before. Because this is no fire starter seeking sick thrills, but something more chilling. A series of calculated, carefully calculated acts of murder. But why were the victims chosen? What's driving the killer? And who will be next? So, sounds like my kind of book anyway, so, hey, I'll be reading a lot soon because my maternity leave is starting, woohoo! And I also got 450p in the doctor's surgery, uh, Patricia Cornwall's uh, novel, Blowfly. It's £8 when it came out, and that was in W. H. Smith, which is cheap. Um, so I haven't read this one, I do like to read Patricia Cornwall, I do like the novels. Um... So this one says, Case Garbetta's work as Virginia's chief medical examiner has come to an end. Fearing that she is about to be fired by the governor, hounded in the media and in the courtroom for what some claimed was her involvement in the murder of a deputy police chief, Scarpetta packs up her belongings and sets out for the warmth and solace of the Florida sun. Settling into a new life as a private forensic consultant, Scarpetta is soon deep in a, into a case that has left colleagues in Louisiana profoundly disturbed. A woman is found dead in a seedy hotel, dressed to go out, keys in her hand. Her history of blackouts and her violent outbursts while under their spell offer more questions than clues about the cause of her death. Then Scarpetta receives news that chills her to the core. From his cell, th cell on death row, Jean-Baptiste Chandon, the vicious and unrepentant wolfman who pursued her to the very doorstep, demands to see her. Only to her will he tell the secrets he knows the authorities desire, the evidence that will bring a global investigation to a swift conclusion. Scarpetta, her niece Lucy and her colleague Detective Peter Marino are left to wonder, after all the death and destruction, what sort of end game could this violent psychopath have in mind. With her knowledge of state-of-the-art forensics and investigative techniques have made her America's most alluring crime writer, Patricia Cornwall once again brings to life a world both frightening and irresistibly compelling. Blowfly is Scarpetta's and Cornwall's most unforgettable journey yet. So yes, I love this one. I do have a friend who collects the hardbacks of Patricia Cornwall and I know she's missing a couple. I don't know if this is one of them. I will check it out and if it, if it is, she can have it once I finish. And if I ever see any of those, I would get them for her because she's my bestest friend. She's my bestie. I love her. Anne Harrod, I love you. See you soon. The final book is The Jewel in My Crown for this month. As you know, I am a huge fan of Jodie Taylor's Chronicles of St Mary's. So when Jodie Taylor announced that they were doing a limited run of 500 copies of the very first book, Just One Damn Thing After Another, in hardback, I went and ordered it straight away. It wasn't the cheap. It was 19 99 from Jodie Taylor's website. But of course it comes signed. So here is the lovely hardback. I'm still keeping my paperbacks because this one is just going to live on my hardback shelf and stay there. Look, look at the pretty cover. So I was very excited when they announced this and I believe they are planning to release the whole series in hardback as limited. So I'm keeping my eye out on the website because I want more. <clears throat> because yes, of course, it's... oh. I want to go back and read this. Once I finish reading all my Terry Pratchett's again, I'm going back to Jersey Day <laughs> as my read read for the month. Um, so yes, so just one damn theme after another in hardback. Gorgeous red end pages. And here is the limited edition front cover. It says limited edition. And then of course it's signed by Joe Taylor to Andrea. Best wishes, Joe Taylor. And Oh, it's just beautiful. I've never, oh, really collected signed limited editions. Um, but I know there were only uh, 500 of these made. 
So I will be looking forward to when they release the second of the book. And I will definitely be adding that to my Jodie collection. So it's gorgeous because uh, Accent Press, uh, the publisher is normally only releasing paperback, but I just think that this has taken off. She's my successor to Terry Pratchett. The humor's very there, the humor is there. So yes, very, very excited. And the, the next book's out next year and she's working on, so book nine's out next year and she's working on book 10. So we know there's more of them as well. Yay, thank you, Jodie Taylor. Yay. So if you're interested in Jodie Taylor's books, just go to jodietaylor.com. It's all on there and it links to her shop as well. And St. Mary's merchandise, what more can you want? So that is my book haul for this month. Can you tell I'm getting excited because it's nearly Christmas and I'm finishing work soon for my maternity leave and I have a whole year off. Well, it's like, it's not a normal year off work because obviously bringing up a baby is hard work anyway, but I don't have to go to the office every day. It's just like, yes. Not that I hate my job, I love my job. Don't get me wrong, I do. I love my job and I love the people, but it's going to be nice to be at home with my little baby. So yes, I'm getting excited because it's Christmas. Yay. Uh, that's, that's all. That's all the books. No more books this year. Well, no more books till after Christmas. Then we'll do another haul. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this all. If you've read any of the books other than this one, because, you know, I've read it. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Obviously, I've read The, the Dark Tower because that was last month's read. Let me know what you think about any of the other books if you've read them. Um, let me know what you're reading. I'm always interested to see what people are reading and recommending. And I will see you all soon, BookTube. Bye!